So with this whole lockdown in place, I decided to go ahead and update my website. So I've been looking through a whole bunch of images I've taken in the past, uh, engagement shoots, weddings, everything that I would put on my website. When going through the images, it was pretty evident that I shoot really heavily center weighted in terms of composition and how I use my lenses. And I also shoot primarily with a wide angle lens, a 24 mil. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that is the case. But I decided today I would make a video on how my style is developed, why I use a wide angle lens, and a little bit of a talk on perspective and how to create depth in your photos. By the way, all of these photos were taken with my 24mm 1.4G Master. I've specifically picked out every single photo based on the fact that it's with a 24mm. So going back a little bit when I was on Nikon and when I first switched over to Sony, my two main lenses were a 35 and an 85. Both 1.4s, uh, I think I was using a 1.8 for a little while because I couldn't afford the 1.4, but nevertheless, I was using 35 and 85. And I slowly kind of adapted to using 24 and 55 with like 85 for the ceremony and stuff, but 24 mil is my bread and butter. I probably shoot 90% of the images at a wedding with my 24 mil. And one of the main reasons I do that is because I call it my storyteller lens. One of the good things about a 24 mil is you can get really close to your subjects and still show a lot in the frame. You do have to be a little bit careful where you're placing things in the frame. Like for example, you don't wanna be putting heads and arms off into the side. If you have a look at this, if I put my arm out here, it's gonna make it look really, really long. The same thing's gonna happen if you're talking about photos with a wide angle. So you really have to be careful with how you compose your images. And I think adapting to 24 mm when I started using it, I really kind of naturally just put everything center weighted. So I used to use rule of thirds a little bit and other kind of compositions, you know, I, I wasn't really focused on any kind of composition in particular, but I've obviously adapted using a center weighted uh, image and I really like the way it looks personally. This is obviously just a taste thing and there's no right or wrong. You guys are going to shoot how you want to shoot, but it's really important to start developing your own style if it's not something you've looked into. One of the other things I notice is I really don't pay that much attention to other wedding photographers online. I have lots of friends that are wedding photographers and I definitely have a few that I really, really look up to. But in terms of following other people's work, I more concentrate on like uh, street photographers. I'm really heavy into like documentarian photography and stuff like that. So that kind of influences my wedding work, I guess, in some way as well. But we're just going to go over some images and talk to you guys about them and why a 24mm kind of made the shots for me personally. So for example, with this image here, uh, we were just running down the beach because we wanted to get to this point down by the rocks before the sun went below the horizon. So I told them just to run down the beach and we just ran for it, get down to the rocks and we, we got there in the end. So it was kind of lucky. The sun was right on the horizon. But I was just running down the beach and I could focus on Tash here really close to Sean and it just kind of gives it a really kind of 3D dimensional look to the image uh, without too much distortion because they're in the middle of the frame. And you can also at the same time see what's going on around them. With a 50mm or an 85mm, you can't really get that effect. You can stand further back, but you're still not going to have a wider angle of view. And again, with this photo here, you can see the bride's just waiting in the car, the rain's dropping down, the window's down, and uh, I'm just leaning up against the car to create that depth and that 3D look. 35 mil you can get pretty close to this kind of thing but it's just not quite as dynamic another reason i really like 24 mil on this shot for example is you can get really up close into the action and sometimes a little bit of distortion like ben's hand here reaching out to the camera while one of the guests throws the confetti all over him here's another case where we were just running off a sunset uh, the sun was just going down below the clouds and we wanted to get some really nice photos on the road here. So again, I just told them to gap it, run down the road. I chased after them and you can see you get a really nice wide angle shot with no distortion because they're center weighted again. Now here's another shot with my 24 mil. We're down in Queenstown in one of the canyons down there. And I was just kind of focused on getting the mountains with a little bit of sky in there. And because of where I am, where I'm standing, you definitely... I wouldn't have been able to get this shot with a 50 mil or even probably a 35 mil. So because I was on 24, I was able to get a lot of information in the background. You can see the road going up, the hills in the background and the sky with the couple down there in the background. And again, because they're not off to the side, 
there's really not that much distortion. One of the things I touched on at the start was talking about perspective. So a big reason a wide angle is really good for that is because you can really tell a story of what's going on in the foreground and in the background. For example, this image here was a little girl playing on the ground and her mother's sitting on the couch and they're just having a laugh together. But without that wide angle, you know, I'm backed right up against the wall here. And without that wide angle, you wouldn't have been able to get that sort of context into the image. I do often take quite a few downward shots as well, trying to point the camera straight down to display a little bit of context again about what's going on around you and just a different point of view. In this image, I just have a girl sitting on the couch. She's just watching a movie before they walk down the aisle. We're all waiting in a room there. Talking about perspective as well, I really like getting down. If there's nothing around that I can sort of shoot through or against to create a little bit of depth, I'll often get closer to the ground and use the ground itself or the grass or the sky or whatever's happening to create a little bit of depth and make it look like a more 3D image. Sometimes I use my 24mm to create a little bit of distortion as well. So in this image here, Georgia was just standing on the deck. We were about to go down to the ceremony and get her married. So I jumped down on the lawn and pointed my camera up and you can see the building is lent back a little bit because of the distortion on a 24mm. And it just creates an interesting looking image and something a little bit out of the ordinary. In this image here, we went out to this local dam. These guys spent a lot of time here in their childhood. So did I actually, I grew up around this area. So I knew it well and uh, I decided to go up there and get them to stand up and just get a little bit more of a quirky composition, I guess. For her, I know it was one of George's favorite images. And with being a 24mm, you can see a lot of what's going on around you in the background. Again, I'm backed up right up against the wall here, so I couldn't have gotten any further back without kind of jumping over the barrier, and then the composition just wouldn't have been the same. So I was thankful to have my 24mm on me. Again, with this image, it was the same kind of thing, but I just got really low down and pointed the camera up, and it kind of creates distortion, but it's a good kind of distortion in my point of view. I really like how the image looks. If I was going to do it again, I probably just would have cropped out the... Uh, hillside in the background just so it was a really clean image uh, without anything distracting in it. In these images you guys may have seen them I edited these photos live on my YouTube channel uh, but there's I picked out a few because Jared and Taylor uh, really love their dog. I can't remember his name off the top of my head but he was a fantastic dog and a 24 mil allows me to get really up close and create dynamic photos uh, while telling a story of just them going for a walk in the park basically. So in this image here, they just were trying to get him up and give him a treat, making him sit on this log. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about 24 mil that gives you a perspective which you wouldn't get with any other lens. After that, we went for a walk down the hill. And again, I can be kind of close to the couple and just get them holding hands with the dog in the background. And it just creates, again, I'm, I know I'm talking about it a lot, but creating that depth to give you a really kind of 3D looking image. This is also one of Jared and Taylor's favorite photos. They were trying to not get the pup in the water and he just jumped in anyway. So I jumped in the stream here and just held my camera right down against the water with the flippy screen out and used the uh, focus tracking system of the Sony to get him running towards me. It is a little bit out of focus, but it's good enough and they really love the image. And also again with the 24mm, I was able to get a lot of stuff in the background and it just creates an interesting look. Another really great reason with the 24mm, this isn't a particularly amazing image, but uh, when we go off for an engagement shoot with a couple, I'll usually jump in the back of their car and just tell them where to drive, and then I can get some shots of them just traveling along as they normally would. And with a 35 or a 50, especially a 50, but even with a 35, it's not quite wide enough to get that same kind of effect when you're in close quarters like that. In this image here, we had the surfer going into the water, so I decided to quickly run back. You can still see my footsteps in the sand there, and just whip out my 24mm, get an image focused on Jared and Taylor with the surfer slightly out of focus in the background, which is one thing I really like with the 24 at 1.4. The 1.4 effect, the shallow depth of field that you get combined with a wide angle creates really interesting images. And then we just jumped up on the rocks here. You can still see the surfer in the background. I think in the final image, I actually cloned him out of it and the rocks just to make it a little bit cleaner. But again, you can see you can get really close and get really intimate images while still showing some background. But because my camera is level and the couple are centered in the frame, there's no perceived distortion in terms of like limbs and heads or anything like that. So you still get a really nice, clean 
looking image without too much distortion if you center everything and make sure your camera is fairly level. I also really enjoy 24mm for the detail photos in the morning. So with the 24mm G Master in particular, and I think most 24mm are pretty similar, because of the wide angle, you can focus really, really closely. So I don't even own a macro lens, but I use the 24mm a lot for ring shots like these ones here. Just getting really close and getting a kind of really 3D looking image with the shoes either side. 24mm really shines in this case when I was shooting Julie and Alex's wedding. Julie had just finished getting dressed and she was doing some final touches before she went and did a reveal. And you can see with the 24mm, I was just able to lean back onto the bed and get some images with the window and some of the roof and the floor. Compositionally, it's really quite a pleasing photo for me personally. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to get it again with a 35. So you could get fairly close, but you'd be surprised how wide 24mm is compared to a 35. It's a pretty big difference. This image here is one of my favorites. It's nothing amazing, but being in that situation and knowing the bride with her daughters getting ready with her, I knew she would be into this kind of image. So this room was really, really small, but because I had my 24 mil, I was able to just get really low down and just squeeze into the corner of the room, get a shot of the girl's mom getting the final touches done on her dress. And it just kind of it's like telling the story through a kid's eyes. So again, guys, like I said, it's really just a compositional thing. I really enjoy how you can compose images with a 24. In wedding photography, for example, I'm quite often in really cramped spaces. And 24 paired up with my 55 for when I want that tighter shot is a really, really fantastic combo. So it's definitely something I would recommend trying out for yourselves, but it's not going to suit everybody. A lot of people I know and, and full-time really, really amazing professional photographers have tried 24 and they don't like it. So it's definitely each to their own and uh, it's just something I recommend trying with. More importantly than the 24mm or the 35mm or any lens really is using that perspective to get low, get high, shoot through stuff and just create more dimension. So I'll just leave you guys with some more images from my 24mm. If you have any questions drop a comment below and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one in a couple of days.